Good morning, it's Friday during the lockdown, and once again I'm privileged to invite you to my home for a faith reflection. I once again wish to start by saying the prayer for peace in Southern Africa. <clears throat> Afflicted as we are during this time of uncertainty, the violence has abated somewhat, but we must still long and yearn for peace. So let us pray. A God of justice and love, bless us, the people of Southern Africa, and help us to live in your peace. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, let me sow pardon. And where there is discord, let me sow harmony. Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, to receive sympathy as to give it. For it is in giving that we shall receive, in pardoning that we shall be pardoned, in forgetting ourselves that we shall find unending peace with others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We are encouraged to say this prayer for peace in Southern Africa often, to say it when we are alone, to say it with the family, and to say it in the community. The topic for today, <clears throat> uh, today being the Feast of the Transfiguration, uh, is on chaos, disfiguration, and the need for a new creation, or transfiguration, if you like. I recently read a book on the second half of life. The book is entitled, This Blessed Mess. The opening line simply reads, This book is about struggle. The author goes on to describe the chaos of living in present-day society. The occupants of our global village experience chaos and upheaval, comprising the horrors right now of COVID-19, heat waves which claim lives, unseasonal rains, and massive flooding. Recently, we have also been experiencing forest fires of apocalyptic precautions, a proportions rather, either displacing people or killing them. All this makes life uncertain and our insecurities are heightened. Add to this the human complicity in wars, state capture, looting, the instigating of political violence, substance abuse, ecological damage, racism, violence, abuse of children and vulnerable persons, the abuse of animals through poaching and abandonment, a nuclear pro proliferation, and it becomes easy to see why this chaos can so easily overwhelm us. Biblically, chaos is the opposite of creation. It is raw, unformed energy, and because it lacks shape and form, it is totally unpredictable. The original chaos was transformed into life-giving energy, which we call creation, and God saw that it was good. But the litany of disasters listed above shows that this good world has been disfigured. To the extent that we have contributed to the pollution, the negativity, and so on, and we too have become disfigured. This is why the remembrance of the transfiguration and the commitment to its values are so important. We need to get back to the mountain of revelation and listen again to the voice of faith. Moses challenges us with the Genesis narrative. And Elijah reminds us of the prophetic task of challenging the status quo, which makes a profit out of uncontrollable consumerism. Jesus challenges us to again seek the path that leads to God and the Father not to be silenced, 
reminds us that the way of Jesus is correct and that we ought to listen to him. In short, the reading of the Transfiguration event challenges us to re-engage with the work of bringing order out of chaos. What this calls for is for us to commit ourselves to the new heavens and the new earth. And uh, in the text which accompanies this video clip, I give you the references. The Gospel text is a beautiful composition, woven like a tapestry enriched with Old Testament threads. In praying the text, an important aspect nourished me. After their prayer experience, and it was a prayer experience if you look at the original text, uh, the divine voice requested the apostles to listen to Jesus. The three apostles looked up and saw only Jesus. How nice if our prayer experiences could end in such a way that we look up and see only Jesus. For that to happen, we need to be open, honest and willing to acknowledge that we are in need of redemption. Let us pray. Lord, we turn to you in our time of need. Help us to reconstitute ourselves in the transfigured humanity, in a transfigured human community, after the violence that has disfigured us in recent weeks in South Africa and in Eswatini. Remove all notions of hatred and vengeance from among us. We are still in the midst of a frightening pandemic and look to you to once again speak your creative word in our hearts, our families, our church and our world. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you, your homes and your families and remain with you forever. Stay safe, stay well and stay committed to the gospel. Thank you.